day 568 without sunshine. Ah, oh, that's how it feels. I'm making another video just to explain a little bit more in depth what actually unfolded here. So on the day that I started packing up all my stuff, that was like Sunday when it was going to be uh, forecasted as a direct hit to Cairns. And then I had to work on Monday and Tuesday, so I didn't have time to prepare for any of the worst case scenarios that they were talking about. So Sunday I prepared for the storm surge that they were talking about. A storm surge is a rise in the ocean level. It's associated with cyclones and if it coincides with high tide, which that's what was predicted, the seawater can actually um, travel several kilometres inland. Because I'm only about 800 metres from the ocean and two to three metres above sea level, that put me in the orange zone. This is Cyclone Jasper. So he came in here, he did a little twirl here, he came down. This is when he was at his highest of Category 4. He came down here. So when it got to about here, this is when they started to predict that he was going to hit Mackay. Because as you can see, it was heading straight this way. Then eventually, he started going this way and then they were like, oh, he's going to hit Townsville. Then he decided to head up a little bit. And when he started to get to here, this is when they started to see him track towards straight towards Cairns. So they thought, yep, the cyclone's coming to Cairns. But over the progress of the days, um, he sort of started tracking up again. But, you know, as you can see, cyclones can come up and down. So it wasn't sure, like, you know, how long he was going to, like, keep heading north and when he was going to start heading east. The cyclone kept tracking north and it eventually hit Woodja Woodja, which is here. Just past the Dane Tree. So Port Douglas got a lot of the strong winds, it's sort of like the cyclone was around this area here and then the strong winds made their way down to Cairns. So I'm on my way home now, um, this is from the Barren River here, so it's almost crossing that bridge now, it's very close. However, the rain was only just beginning. It had a lot more to come. Actually, I think a lot is an understatement. Bucket loads. So when I returned back home, I wasn't expecting it to be flooded or anything because the cyclone didn't hit cans. Flooding can be something that comes out of nowhere. I've actually experienced this firsthand when I was living in Maryborough, Queensland. We had clear skies like not a cloud in the sky, no rain and suddenly we got this alert to say warning floods are coming and I was like what? So I went down to the river, had a look and it had already broken its banks by like a lot um, and then that made me realise that yeah so what happens is that some other area where the water can be caught by that river can have flash flooding and then of course the water comes down to where you are. So the Barren River has had 890 mils of rain in the last two days. That's out of the whole catchment area being 163 kilometres long. That's a lot of area to be capturing a lot of rain. The northern beaches are tucked away from the hustle and bustle. On the south side of the northern beaches, there's only one entry in and one entry out to each of the beaches. Each of them like their own little community. Some of them have hairdressers, bakeries, supermarkets, alcohol shops, cafes and restaurants. At the top of the beaches you can find the Coranda Range which has the Barren Falls. The Barren Falls starts all the way up at Mariba. It's quite a big river and it runs down and it splits here and it turns into Martyrs Creek and then the rest of the Barren River, river runs this way and there's the mouth. 
The Barren River is 165 kilometers in length, and it says that in 1939, after a cyclone due to flooding, the Barren River mouth changed its course by two kilometers north. Okay, well, please don't do that while I live near you. During the wet season, it's not unlikely for this river to flood, and when it does, it inundates the beaches and cuts off the one road in and out, isolating all the towns. The Tomatas Creek is currently sitting at four meters high, when normally it's usually about two meters high at high tide. The road that goes over Tomatas Creek, the highway, is completely shut off to traffic. And the Barren River floods, also Holloway's Beach and Machen's Beach, will be wedged in between the Barren River and Tomatas Creek with no way out. Queensland Government have this website where you can actually pick um, flood cameras and traffic cameras and you can actually see like live what the water's doing. So today the bridge is actually starting to clear so that road will be able to open up again by the end of today I would say. For the last three days this pocket of rain has just been sitting on top of Cairns without moving anywhere it just seems to be lingering on top of us but it's starting to thin out now. There's several times when I miss the van like for various different reasons but today would be a good example of um, it'd be nice to have the van now because the internet won't work at home um, like since the cyclone it's just not working it won't load anything at all anymore it just keeps getting progressively worse so I've come up the Coranda range it wasn't raining when I got here um, I came to do some filming but I'm gonna have to wait till the rain goes and um, work on my computer because I I've got uh, internet service here now but um, I just want to like make a video and I need the internet to be able to do that so I'm working from my car at the moment it appears that the window of opportunity to come up here and film is gone because the rain's just not um, letting up now. On the way back home, the highway was reopened with no traffic management to be seen anywhere. Hours later, I decided to travel on the same road. Okay, they took the sign down to say that the road was closed, but yet... pretty keen of them to open the road up when I saw the river look oh the river hadn't even receded much yet um yeah I'm getting off this road before I get um stuck on it
place. I find that really extremely stressful and worrisome. Like, we trust these, like, disaster management people to keep us safe. Like, who are the people that are meant to be watching that road, that major highway, four lanes, with, like, the Barren River running over it everywhere, and there's a nobody? Nobody watching that road to make sure that, like, they close it down before it, like, floods and people get stuck or have an accident? Sorry about the sound quality there, but yeah, obviously that was all a big panic. And I know I sounded quite um, calm, but I was actually really stressed because I really thought that that truck behind me was going to hit me. Well, everyone, I found another reason to move. Take me back to the south side where there is no flooding. Day 568 without sunshine. Ah, oh, that's how it feels. There you go, ma'am. Enjoy your meal. Alright, alright. But in all seriousness, this was just a practice run for when Cyclone Jasper comes back again. Next week. Honestly, that's what someone's speculating, but I'm not even going to go there. We had another 80 mils of rain today, and then tomorrow we were supposed to get nothing, but every day it just keeps getting updated, and it's like, oh no, you'll have 80 mils tomorrow, and then it'll stop. And then the next day it'll be like another 80 mils. 80 mils. Today the Barren River uh, was upgraded to moderate flood level, while the Tomatoes Creek uh, data is unavailable. We can only hope that tomorrow the rain eases up. If you made it this far, thanks for watching and hopefully you found this informative, if anything. I don't plan on making another video, however, who knows what's going to come next. I've come out to look for all the crocodiles walking the streets. None to be seen yet. As I conclude this video, we are currently getting smashed by like torrential rain.